living here in Houston, I've met so many gay men, not just gay, but bisexual, LGBTQ men and women, but especially men who are suffering, who are dying in silence. They look like you and I. See, this is an issue too. I feel like there's a whole lot of education that needs to be done. A lot of straight people, or at least the heteronormative community, they believe that LGBTQ looks a certain way. You know, they're feminine, they're flamboyant, they're over the top costume, fem men, feminine men. But that's actually not true. Like I mentioned before, the effeminate gay men, those are actually minorities. Most LGBTQ men, bisexual and gay men, look like regular human beings. They're very masculine. They're very straight acting. They pass for straight. They're the ones you think are straight by default. A lot of them are your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your cousins, your pastors. I got stories about pastors for days. Yeah, I'm not even ready for this conversation. Straight bullets will fly. One. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About Us with Uche. I am your host, Uche. If you are joining for the first time, please make sure to download, subscribe, share with your friends and family. If this is your first time joining on YouTube, please also make sure to subscribe. Do not forget to hit that bell notification so anytime I upload a video, you'll be the very first to be notified. So today, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about some LGBTQ stuff. As you know, if you have been following my page or if this is your first time on my page, you will see that I talk a lot about spirituality, but I don't just talk about spirituality. Of course, I consider myself an LGBTQ advocate, but I don't just consider myself an advocate. I consider myself an advocate for specifically the Black African diaspora LGBTQ. So Black people from Africa who live outside of African continent. Those are the LGBTQ members that I focus the most on. And like I've mentioned before, there's nothing wrong with being LGBTQ, non-Black LGBTQ. There's nothing wrong with the LGBTQ people on the African continent. I just focus specifically on this group because these are the African Africans who have the privilege to be able to be the driving force for change. You know, as you probably know, a lot of things flow from the West, for example, from America, Canada, UK, and the rest of the world copy, the rest of the world emulate. You can see this in our arts, culture, behavior, mannerisms, language, and all kinds of things. So I feel like that diasporans, the African diasporans, they have the privilege, and also they are the trendsetters and also the blueprint that can incentivize change for people back on the continent to be able to feel more courage, more confidence, in themselves to be able to be themselves. That's why I focus a lot on the not just LGBTQ, but specifically Black African diaspora LGBTQ. So Black Africans from Africa, but don't live on the African continent. The reason why I wanted to make this episode specifically is because oftentimes I've had so many people, especially Africans or specifically Nigerians who live in America, who constantly ask me, of course, politely, hey, Uche, don't you feel some type of way talking about LGBTQ stuff, being openly queer? What do your parents think about this? What do your family think about this? And some people find it very eccentric. Some people find it weird. Some people find it very motivating. Some people find it very inspiring. You know, like it's kind of like a mix of both. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't know where it's coming from, of course. I'm African, but not just African. I'm not just Nigerian. I was actually born and raised in Nigeria, partly. So I do understand that typical Nigerian mentality, that typical African mentality when people come to me with these kind of concerns. And their concerns are very valid. And for me, I don't feel like it is just enough or intelligent enough. It's not tangible enough for me to be like, I just don't care because that's not entirely true per se. Yes, there's a lot of not caring that comes from me, hence why I do what I do. But there's a deeper sense in what I do. And the long story short is no one else is doing it. Like I mentioned before, if you go through my page, you see a whole lot of things about spirituality. This is where my true focus is. But the sheer fact that no one else is talking about, not just the LGBTQ community, but specifically this niche, this subsect. But then when you look at the LGBTQ community, especially here in the West, is very white dominated. You know, a lot of a lot of white advocacy, a lot of mental health advocacy for white a lot of voice activists a lot of a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities for white lgbtq members especially white men to thrive but there's not a whole lot of recognition for black even black americans but specifically africans and for me you know having traveled the world you know and even he, living here in america houston dallas new york los angeles chicago going to places like london even visiting nigeria i've seen so many 
Africans who are living double lives, who are like the stories that I have in my head is ridiculous. Of course, I do understand where it's coming from. Again, I'm not going to pretend that I don't understand where it's coming from. So I feel like I haven't met a lot of people, talked with a lot of people. I started to see that I have a privilege that they don't have, you know, like me personally, especially considering the fact of my uh, my family background, you know, and I've talked about this in on previous episodes, especially the one that I did with Jacob, where I talked about growing up in Nigeria. My case is very unique in the sense that I don't have any sense of deep connection with my own family. You know, I was born in Nigeria and within months, my mom moved to America and I, I grew up on my own, basically with my grandparents. And then when I eventually, when I got reunited with my family, it was just kind of awkward. It was just very toxic. And it was just so easy for me to walk away. One, there was no bond. And second, the relationship that I had with them was just very toxic. So it was so easy for me to walk away and do my own thing. I do understand that the typical African does not have that. And instead of looking at that from a handicap perspective of, yo, I don't have that traditional family relationship with my family like most African families do have. I I chose to see that as a positive thing. So I've seen that as an advantage for me to be able to walk away and do my own thing. As a result, I've been living a life that's most authentic to me. This is something that a lot of Africans don't have. And in walking that path, I've come to see a much more deep sense in my divine manifestation. And again, these are words that I use, you know, in my spirituality courses. I talk about spirituality a lot. And for anyone who's new here, my whole strategy is spirituality. And to me, spirituality is the oneness of all, which means that we are all literally the exact sense spirit. However, we manifest perfectly and necessarily in different forms. So your manifestation as yourself is perfect. doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, black, white, gay, straight, doesn't matter. It is perfect. You have to stay authentic to your true self and vice versa. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people fall to the ways of the word because we've been indoctrinated to believe that we are not good enough. You know, like God has created us perfectly, called us into this world perfectly. Like God is not just perfect. God is the epitome of perfection and also a perfect creator. So we creations, we have to be perfect, right? Because a perfect creator cannot create anything less than perfect. So we creatures coming from a perfect God, we have to be perfect as well, right? So you have to remain in your most authentic self at all times. But unfortunately, a lot of people who have been born into this world have been indoctrinated to forget about that so that they can be anything but themselves. But me, though, as an individual, I don't have that pressure at all. I don't have that typical African father, you know, trying to mold me into something I'm not. I don't have that typical African mother trying to mold me into something I'm not. And also, I have a very stubborn mentality that you can't tell me anything. It's not because I'm rebellious per se. I just don't like to be uncomfortable. And also because I believe in myself. I believe in my ability to persevere. I believe in myself to be able to do anything I want. Not because I'm rebellious, not because I'm a horrible person, not because I I, I don't like authority. I just believe that, you know, like just like the Bible said, things Jesus said in the Bible, my wish for you is to have life and have life abundantly. I believe that. I believe that life is supposed to be had abundantly. So I have been intentional to create a life that is very abundant within my own confines, within my own privilege, within what I can do as an individual occupying space and time. So I do understand that that assertiveness, that mentality comes from a place of privilege. So this is why I've taken it upon myself to speak up for people who cannot. Now, anyone who knows me on a personal level, you probably know that I'm a very private person. I'm the type of person that I don't even like to share my address. I don't even like to talk about anything personal about me. I could be dating somebody you wouldn't even know. I could have so many friends or whoever or have lack of friends you would even know because to me I'm a very private person if it has nothing to do with you don't worry about it that's the type of person I am so me actually being intentional and talking about LGBTQ stuff you know put my face on here talking about being queer and advocacy and things like that is actually me going against my nature but then also one of the reasons why I do it is because I feel like there's a divine calling to do it. I feel like this is one of the reasons why God brought me to this world. Of course, like I said, I've said many times, I don't just talk about LGBTQ stuff because to me, talking about LGBTQ stuff, to me, LGBTQ issues is very trivial because I'm just appalled that we're still talking about that. Like it's a big deal now. But I'm doing it because no one else is doing it. If I had a lot more people who are talking about African diaspora or African LGBTQ awareness, I wouldn't be bothered with it. Not necessarily because it doesn't need to be 
talked about, but to me, I feel like my main focus is spirituality. That is where my true passion is, spirituality, the oneness of all, you know, like talking about the veil of forgetfulness, you know, like what are we doing here? We don't know where we were before we were born. We don't know where we're going after we're dead. So the time we have right now to live is now. We have to get our things together right now in preparation for what's to come. That is a lot of my focus, you know, but of course, sexuality also ties into spirituality and the single fact that LGBT but specifically African LGBTQ is not talked about. That is why I have been intentional in carrying that on my plate as a cross, an additional cross. And I, I believe that this is one of the reasons why God has brought me to this world for me to be able to do it. Trust me, the cross is heavy. I know sometimes, you know, like especially when I talk off camera about these kind of things, I make it seem easy. It's not as easy as it, as, as it sounds. I know the repercussions that come with it. I know the consequences. I know I know some of the people that I could lose in my life. I, I know some of the opportunities I could lose in my life, especially having my face on here as a black African queer man with all kinds of opinions to share about everything. I understand the way the word works, but I feel like this is something that is very necessary. It's a very heavy cross, but this is a path that I've chosen to serve others as opposed to just serving myself. It would have been easy for me to live my life, you know, as a confident, educated, independent, autonomous LGBTQ person of color in America and just call it a day. But to me, when I travel the world, when I see my brothers and sisters living here in Houston, I've met so many gay men, not just gay, but bisexual LGBTQ men and women, but especially men who are suffering, who are dying in silence. They look like you and I. See, this is an issue too. I feel like there's a whole lot of education that needs to be done. A lot of straight people, or at least the heteronormative community, they believe that LGBTQ looks a certain way. You know, they're feminine, they're flamboyant, they're over the top costume, fem men, feminine men. But that's actually not true. Like I've mentioned before, the effeminate gay men, those are actually minorities. Most LGBTQ men, bisexual and gay men, look like regular human beings. They're very masculine, they're very straight acting, they pass for straight. They're the ones you think are straight by default. A lot of them are your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your cousins, your pastors. I got stories about pastors for days. Yeah, I'm not even ready for this conversation. Stray bullets will fly, okay? Yes, I see this so many times everywhere, all the time, in so many different countries, every, every single place. And it's not just black people. It's not just Africans. It's not just black people. I've met white people who are also in the closet, but I feel like a lot more white people have more privilege. They have more advantage, you know, social advantage, more so than the African, the average black person, but specifically the African. So this is why I am taking it upon myself so we can start a, a sense of awareness, education, to teach people what LGBTQ is. I know the word has taught us that we are taboos, we are abominations, that we don't deserve the breath of life and all this nonsense. It is time to start on learning all that nonsense and love yourself for who you are. When you love yourself for who you are and you embody that confidence within you, I believe that the universe will carve out a space for you specifically as an individual. And then you're able to attract the people that the universe has created for you to attract. This is how you're able to grow within your own confines. As within, so without. You're able to find loving relationships that are, that are not built on pettiness and you settling for less. I've seen so many closeted gay men who are in these low vibrational re relationship with straight men where you pretend to be straight when you're not. I, I remember this particular guy that I went to Dallas with a few years ago. This guy is very obviously gay. He was reuniting with one of his old buddies from Nigeria as well. And he was pretending to be into this girl at the bar. And I was like, yo, what are you doing, bro? And he looked at me like with, with sadness and hopelessness and helplessness in his eyes and said, hey, you know how it is. It, you, you just got to play the game. I'm not proud of myself for losing respect for that man right there and then, but I understood it. This is even more so why I feel like I have to do what I have to do. You know, like I have to do it. If I'm going to be that catalyst to normalize having a conversation about LGBTQ topics and things like that within the typical African household, then so be it. I just want it to be a normal conversation that could be had. When your son, when your, when your daughter comes out as lesbian, as gay, bisexual, transsexual, asexual, pansexual, anything that is not conformed to heteronormativity, the first thing the African parent does is not to start rebuking them and buying and casting and praying. If you're African, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if I can start that, if I can incentivize more people, be catalytic for more people to begin normalizing, having this honest conversations that affect all of us, believe it or not, Chad, you probably don't see it because you're not part of the community. And because I am open about who I am, I've had a lot of people, men and women, but specifically men who confide in me and they have shared 
things that almost brought me to tears. This is why I do what I do. It is basically service to others. Again, it's easy for me to just, you know, roll my eyes and live my life as a privileged black man in America, you know, work my little nine to five job and just do my thing and call it a day. But I see a deep sense of pain in our community and I see where I fit in perfectly. Again, do not get it twisted. It's a very heavy cross, very, very heavy cross. It's, it's physically, mentally, and spiritually draining. But I understand that this is a cross that God has bestowed on me and I know that I have what it takes to carry it. This is why I do what I do. And like I've said so many times, you are your best asset, especially if you believe in God. I'm just being honest. If you believe in God, you are your best asset. God makes no mistake. God made you the way you are for a reason. There's no reason for you to change anything about yourself. Matter of fact, I think that's also written in the Bible. You do not change anything about yourself because you have won by default. You have been caught into this world perfectly. God knew your trials, your tribulations. God knew literally every single hair in your body before you were birthed. You would not exist if God did not approve your application to be here. It doesn't matter how you are conceived. So the best way that you can survive this life, in spite of all the things that the world is telling you, negative things about yourself that the world is telling you, is to be yourself. Do what comes natural to you. Whether it's you being a woman, whether it's you being a man, whether it's you being black, whether it's you being Hispanic, whether it's you being born in whatever country, whatever tax bracket, be as natural as possible. Don't try to conform to somebody else. You are unique in your own individual way. Imagine walking into a room filled with so many different faces. Just as everyone's faces is different, your mentality is different, your purpose in life is different, embody your own. Do not try to be anyone else but yourself because once you do that, you have failed because you've already won by default. This is basically the essence of what I'm trying to do. Be yourself. You are your own biggest weapon. No one else can live your life better than you. And that's basically why I talk about LGBT Q issues, but specifically African diaspora LGBTQ education and awareness because the time to do something different is now. So if this sounds like a topic that you're really interested in learning more about, please subscribe to me, share with your friends and family. I'm trying to incentivize as many people as possible. My goal in this life, one of my ultimate goals in life is to die on my deathbed knowing that I was able to incentivize a lot more people. I call these people soldiers, you know, so we can confidently start talking about these things. I mean, I have met lawyers, doctors, engineers, Ivy League graduates who are gay, bisexual, lesbian, and yet they lack that confidence in their own being. I want to be able to start challenging that to change that narrative. So please subscribe, share with your friends and family, support me in any way you can. And just know that this is not the only thing that I talk about. My focus is on spirituality, yes, but I don't also just talk about spirituality. I talk about social issues as well. Like when something is going viral, like something is happening in the world, I give an esoteric perspective to it, you know, but I always try to tie spirituality to it. But again, if if this is something that you're interested in, please subscribe, share with your friends and family. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn, LTAU with Uche. Instagram is UC underscore images. My email is let's talk with Uche at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your wonderful support. Until next time. Bye.